I hope you've really enjoyed uh, sharing the evening with each other. So I, I think all of you have noticed that we've been having quite a, a incredibly odd weather lately. I don't know how many of you have flown in and out of San Francisco International, but weather can really affect your capacity to get in and out of there. And uh, our keynote speaker tonight, Angela Rye, has experienced those, uh, those delays firsthand. She's had several flight delays from the East Coast, so I don't know if we're going to see her tonight. But we're not without an amazing speaker who I get the great privilege of introducing, and that's Amari Hammonds. I, I take it that you know Amari, but let me say a few words about her. Brilliant, indeed. Amari is a member of the class of 2017, a member of the 3L Balsa class. At Stanford, she's been the academic co-chair of Balsa, senior editor and development committee member of the Stanford Law Review, a volunteer teacher for the Street Law Pro Bono Project. She also co-founded SLS's Race and Criminal Justice Reading Group and co-authored policy papers by the Stanford Criminal Justice Center on improving investigations of police shootings. Before law school, Amari worked as a staff writer for Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York City and Mayor Michael Bloomberg of New York City. Her experience working for the mayors informed her work, it was informed by her work as a sociology major at Columbia University, where she focused her studies on race, gender, and urban policy, and was a Mellon Mays undergraduate fellow and Kluge scholar. After she graduates from Stanford, Amari's gonna clerk for the Honorable Merrick Garland, Chief Judge of the DC Circuit. And then, as a, as a new loyal member of the state of California, she will come back to California and clerk for the Honorable Justice Cuellar of the California Supreme Court. All of us who have had the privilege of getting to know Amari in her time at Stanford join me in saying it's a privilege to have you as part of our community, and we can't wait to hear you talk to us tonight. Let me just make sure I have my water situation correct. Uh, thank you so much, <clears throat> Dean McGill, for that lovely introduction. And thank you for Cameron, to Cameron and Lauren for thinking of me. Uh, and thank you all so much for being here. This event is only four years old, but it brings me such joy. And I think the entire Balsa community is such joy to know that this has become um, such a well attended and enjoyed tradition at Stanford Law School. And I think I should also probably thank my optometrist because my ability to get through the speech depends on me being able to read like really tiny letters on my iPhone. <laughs> and <laughs> go glasses. Um, and I, I also, speaking of Cameron and Lauren, I should maybe apologize because I put myself in a really situation, silly situation today that I shouldn't have put myself in knowing what I might have to do tonight. I uh, found myself uh, at Big Basin State Park without a cell phone signal and on a series of trails where it was not entirely clear that we would be able to make it out. There were a number of mudslides that we scrambled up and that I slid down. They laughed at me, but only after they like saw me calm down, because that was terrifying. Um, yeah, we weren't entirely sure we were gonna make it out of there or make it out on time, but we did, so I'm here. And actually, I think a friend who graduated last year had a similar sentiment about law school, not being, not being sure that he was going to make it, 
to graduation, and he felt so blessed and relieved to have made it to graduation because even in the months leading up to it, um, his own personal struggles had given him doubts about his ability to do that. And I think that I and many people here have felt the same way, at least once during law school. Unsurprisingly, this is a common theme of the black experience in America. It was never a sure thing that I and other BALSA students would be here today. There have been many along the way who along the centuries did not want us here or maybe they did, but they have struggled to deftly incorporate us and an increasingly diverse populace into American culture and American intellectual life, but see Beyonce. <laughs> I just thought of that. <laughs> Um, and quite frankly, when I think of the public debates surrounding speech and offense and what exactly we owe each other as members of the same communities, I honestly believe that part of that struggle uh, is because of a group of thought and tastemakers who are realizing that they no longer have a monopoly on what's in and outside the bounds of public discourse. Now, despite such forces at work, uh, it never used to matter to me before law school to have a community of people who had felt those forces personally. I was never involved in any sort of black student group in high school. I don't think we had one at my school. Um, I definitely wasn't involved in the black students organization at my undergrad institution. But I think that a community like Balsa is essential to being a black law student. By and large, the foundational cases, we must read to learn the law we must know, chronicle not our successes and our resilience, but rather all the instances in which it wasn't and hasn't been clear at all that we were going to make it. So for example, in a Supreme Court case originating in my home state of Missouri, a slave named Dred Scott was deemed not to be a person capable of vindicating his own rights in court. And just last year, a Fourth Circuit case out of North Carolina detailed the surgical precision with which the state legislature moved to suppress the black vote after Shelby County came down. Unless we have any amnesia about the course of American history, we used to be called the Negro problem of America. And it's really only recently that that term has kind of not been part of the popular discourse. So no, I could not have made it through uh, this law school experience, this meta experience of seeing myself and my ancestors situated in the, in the pages of our case books as objects, as catalysts uh, in the development of law and norms in this country. I wouldn't have made it without Balsa, without this wonderful black family uh, and we really are a family. I feel very much like an overprotective mama bear when it comes to my baby one L's. <laughs> so don't try to step to them on Facebook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, to be clear, Balsa is not a monolith or a homogenous group. We do think differently about a number of topics. And certainly disagreement amongst students in our group or groups at large have at times caused drama at the law school. Uh, and of course, beyond this campus, so much of today's news has been about ideological classes that, clashes that uh, at times lack even a basic standard of mutual respect. My class's law school experience has been bookended by troubling events that make such clashes more likely to happen. In August 2014, Michael Brown was killed by police in my hometown of St. Louis. This past November, we elected Donald Trump. And last month, we saw uh, Mr. Trump, who had demonstrated and has demonstrated over and over his lack of empathy for or commitment to minority communities, installed as the 45th president of this nation. But we were also blessed to be here at Stanford during these anxiety-producing times. Because we were able to learn early, and then over and over, that it's not always the most important thing, or 
the most desirable thing for all of us to be on the same page, to, as Lauren earlier cautioned against, remain in our silos of like-minded individuals. My most valuable relationships at Stanford Law School have been those where I can trust that I and the other person have a mutual respect and empathy for one another even as we disagree. That is what Balsa has given me reliably and unshakably with love and kindness but also opportunities to challenge myself. Almost three years ago, Tarana Riddick, who is a Balsa alum and also someone I went to college with, uh, when she heard that I was deciding to come here, said, honestly, Amari, it has been the best three years of my life up to that point. I'm sure she's doing well now. <laughs> uh, and I remember that uh, as professors were calling or emailing, trying to convince me to come here, I remember Professor Daniel Ho saying in a voicemail at one point, this is just a really special place. And at the time, I was like, okay, like, I get it. <laughs> All these schools are special, but I, I really take that sentiment seriously now. We will never again be in a community like this again. And my time and the time of other 3Ls are winding down here. Yet now more than ever, we need to make sure to cultivate and hold on to the types of relationships we've been able to foster at this law school. It used to be that Black people were the only ones we thought that, were the only ones who felt as though we were shouting to no one about injustices we were seeing in the world. But I think that with our new president, more and more people are starting to understand what it feels like to see fire, fire everywhere, but to feel crazy when the world at large doesn't seem affected by the heat. And speaking of fire, I just, recently looked up a personal essay I wrote for a college admission long story where I called myself the hot sauce of human beings because that's apparently how I thought of myself back then and I think I think the idea was that I go well with everything and like I can fit into different communities um, I was so creative but really none of us should be striving for that to be the hot sauce because if I were liked by everyone, that would mean that I had not sufficiently shared with the world my own fire and the passion that we all need if we're going to be able to stand up for and work towards what's right in spite of the odds. And so it's important to continue having relationships like the ones we've had at Stanford that give us the strength and the resolve, the resilience and the fortitude to speak even when we're not sure how we're being received, or even if we're being received. Balsa and the Stanford community at large has taught me what to look for in the community I make for myself going forward. As I said earlier, I wasn't sure I would make it through these three years at school, but I did, or rather I think I will if I don't get rained out of this campus. Um, and I'll make it because of this community, this family. So thank you, Balsa, other Stanford Law School classmates, staff, faculty, and administrators for what you've given to me and for showing me what I can give to others. I'm sure many of my classmates feel the same way. And as long as we carry forward with us the generosity of spirit and understanding that we were gifted enough to have the opportunity to learn here, then we will grow into lawyers who will be change makers, not simply because of the briefs we write or the clients we serve or the legal arguments we make, but also because of the coalitions we will be able to form of passionate, smart, but also disparate voices that will be absolutely essential for the fairness, for the justice, and for the equality we seek to bring forth into the world. As I look out at all of you now, I can't help but thinking, as Brother Kendrick Lamar said my 1L year, <laughs> we're going to be all right. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.